Hi, welcome. Today we're going to talk about a controversial opening. I'm talking about the Damiano defense. So this video is for all kinds of players, even if you're a beginner or a candidate, a master. So you will want to see this video because we will talk, of course, about the trap. And not only, I will defend the position for black. So let's start. But before that, did you know that almost 87% of the viewers isn't subscribed? I need your help. And with your help, I will help you too. My goal and my target is you. I want you to improve. I want you to be a better chess player. And to do this, you don't need to pay nothing. You just need to click on the subscribe button. Of course, you push the notifications on because uh, I'm supposing you want to see the different videos that I'm putting every day. And if you're enjoying the content, push the like button and Comment below, uh, you can always talk with me on chess.com and bring me some of your ideas for this channel. Well, let's go. So, about the Damiano's defense, uh, Damiano was a Portuguese player. So, in Portuguese, the name is Pedro Damião, and he has been recognized by the, um, the opening, and he has written the first bestseller of the modern game of chess. So, I don't know to say the name of the, the book, but it's on Italian. Questo libro della imparabile giocapre scacci, something like that. Uh, so, on those days, Damiano was one of the best players in the world. So, we are talking about the 15th century and 16th century. So, very, very interesting. Nowadays, he is most recognized by the creation of this opening. So let's jump to the opening. So the Damianus defense is uh, an opening that we don't play at the highest level, but it's very interesting. It, it consists, uh, it's, play, it's played by black and um, you start with e4, e5, and after knight f3, you're going to play f6. So, normally, uh, the beginners do this kind of move and they lose quickly. Of course, if we do the evaluation with an engine, this is a, a suspicious opening, but we have always the but. Because, first point, who should play it and why? This is considered a gambit. And what is a gambit? A gambit is uh, when we uh, give up material and we have compensation. And in this case, we will want to attack. If we put this opening on an engine, the engine will give one point of an advantage for white. For me, it isn't so, so bad to, to play this kind of stuff. Of course, this will involve um, a lot of training and probably memorization too. But if you want to play this on blitz games or rapid games, yeah, you can. And even on classical games, but be careful. Uh, of course, you won't uh, do that uh, playing against uh, grandmasters or international masters, of course, because it's a suspicious opening. But um, if you're um, courageous um, and you've already played that on an official game, on a classical game, please tell me because I want to know, I want to see your game, okay? So this is the Damiano's defense. And of course, to start, we need to see uh, the trap. And, well, the trap is dangerous if you don't know how to play, uh, to play it. So, what is the trap? Well, after knight takes pawn, the trap is that if with black you take the knight, white will, won, will, will win with violence because exists this move. This is the, the line of the witch. The entering of the witch. So after, for example, g6, the queen will take e5, will give check and will take the rook. Even worse, you don't need to take the rook because after king f7, <laughs> you have better. You have bishop c4, 
bishop c4 it's something powerful because after it, it, the king doesn't have any move to play so this is the only move and after bishop takes uh, well this is the only move queen needs to take and yeah this is over uh, of course you can take with the queen you can take with the pawn it doesn't matter uh, you're winning by several points so here white is winning by six points so uh, as Steinitz uh, said, the opening is the most important part of the, the game <laughs> for today. <laughs> if you are weak in the opening, you are fighting a losing battle from the start. We don't want to start losing the battle. So it's very important to play this opening correctly if you're courageous and want to play it. So let's see the correct form. Well, so we're seeing e4, e5, knight with f6. This is the Damiano defense. And after we are going to see this line, this line and bishop c4. Okay, we are going to see the three variations. And if you want to see more, tell me in the comments. Okay, so after knight e5, you're going to win a lot of games on the internet, at least, uh, with the move queen e7 that's the correct answer because right now you're attacking the knight and you're creating pressure on the pawn so imagine most of the players for example on the blitz game they will play queen h5 check and they will think oh ho, i'm the best because i will win this game but we have a trap if black plays g6 here, black is already better because after knight takes, we have a tactical move. We are going to take e4 with check and we will take the knight. So this is one for black. This could be a continuation. Queen and after queen takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, we are winning by two points. And even if he plays a different thing, for example, bishop e2, we can continue with bishop, uh, queen takes. Of course, white doesn't want to take. White can create pressure with castle and ideas of rook e1, for example, just to show the idea. And we will continue with our development with any problem. Of course, after knight, we can play knight important why is that because he will want to attack the c7 square so we don't want to take or else bishop will take and will give check to our king we don't want this kind of stuff because of the initiative don't forget to see the video about the initiative very important we want to take control of the game so here knight attacks and we play king to d8 of course this is a gambit so this is uh, playable for attacking players if you're defensive probably this won't be a good idea for you you want to attack you want to create prob problems uh, to your opponents and to do that of course you open a file and you want castle you don't need that to this game <laughs> okay so just to show this idea so okay we've already seen one variation but okay why isn't obligated to play this move uh, the white player can do for example knight f3 and here i will suggest you one interesting idea that i studied with of course uh, the fish so d5 the, the idea is to create pressure on the pawn on e4 it's beautiful the idea uh, of course if you compare with the, the fish, the fish will say, oh, white is winning by one point, but we are human, we aren't computers yet. So here, after, for example, d3, takes, takes, and queen takes. For me, this is playable. Of course, if queen goes to e2, okay, queen takes, bishop takes, and the position is equal. Here, even the fish agrees with me, but the thing is that the fish thinks that bishop e2 is better for white because of the development. He is correct. Because later white will play knight to c3. But I have idea. This is, this is the, the video of, of the butts. Because I have idea for you. Because after knight c6, a development move, here after knight c3, we will create pressure 
because after bishop before this knight is pinned. So here, for example, this can continue with castle and after takes takes, well, the position is equal again. Of course, this isn't easy because this can continue with, for example, knight d4 and the king is on the center, but okay, we're going to play this slowly with some calm and we will pray to our opponent not to play uh, bishop a3 <laughs> because it's complicated, but well, just to show. After bishop a3, yeah, probably you will want to play something like that. This isn't easy. And rookie one, uh, white will create pressure on the center. And yes, this is the reason this is a suspicious sorry, uh, opening for black. But you're not losing on material. You're losing on the positional game. And well, let's, let's be realistic. Uh, most of times the gambits uh, are positionally worst. So I think it isn't so bad. But it's complicated, of course. Uh, after rook e8, uh, we will uh, have a complicated game with black. So, let's continue. We have seen the first variation. So, we've already seen this uh, line. And don't forget, this is terrible. This is a blunder. And this is good. This is great. But I want to show you another line quickly. Because after this, 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 uh, of course, white can, uh, uh, um, instead of playing d3, white can play queen e2. This isn't bad for black, because here you can take with the pawn and you're uh, gaining space. The material is equal, and for me, the position is um, better for black, because knight, bishop, and this isn't a problem, because bishop protects the pawn and queen is protecting, uh, protecting c7, so... This is an easy game for black. So for me, this is good. So we've already seen the first line uh, about the second line. OK, we are playing against a strong player and he knows that this will reach a complicated position. OK, very well. It's complicated, but it isn't uh, so bad. So he, instead, he will play d4. D4 is different, and probably in 10 games, one or two guys will play that. Uh, I have a suggestion for you. You're going to be mad after my suggestion, because after D4, I will recommend you to play D5. Let's go to the jungle. Let's create problem, pro problems, problems to our opponents, sorry for the English. So here, uh, white can continue with take or take. The better move is to take this pawn on d5. But let's see first this move. If pawn takes, pawn takes. Let's go to the jungle. Because after queen takes, king takes, knight goes away. And we have won one tempo. And now, I will suggest just to give up the pawn. Why? Because we are creating symmetry. And we have three pawn islands. Later, we will talk about that on another video. And he has three pawn islands. So, the game is equal. So, if you're playing against a stronger opponent, why not playing that? You won't lose the game, on the opening at least. Okay, so this is equal for black. Uh, but, okay. What if it takes this pawn? Of course, this line is better for white again, but... I will suggest you uh, two lines. First one, queen takes. Second one, pawn advances. If I was playing this line, I would uh, play this one because of the space and the problems. It's more complicated, but it's more enjoyable for black. Because if queen takes, the idea is that pawn takes. And yeah, for the engines, for the computers, the game needs equal, but for my level, uh, it's not easy because, in my opinion, black is playing for the draw. So this is the suggestion. So we are leading on the development, uh, but we are losing by one point. The thing is that for the computers, this is playable. But uh, yeah, 
it isn't easy for white to win because of the problems on the structure but okay he is winning by one point the bishops are from the same color so for me this isn't uh, very easy for black if you want to play for the win and this is a gambit you don't want to play positional you want to play for the problems for the complications you want an abstract game so my suggestion is just not to play that but advance the pawn and okay you are creating pressure on the knight and in my opinion most of your opponents will play queen e2 to pin the pawn so after that you will continue with f5 and of course this is the idea queen check and okay c6 takes takes and of course takes with the pawn or else you would lose the knight be careful with that this isn't good for for black if we take with the knight it's mandatory to take with the pawn and the thing is that you're attacking the queen and attacking the knight so so it's more complicated to play for white so here it's necessary to give a check because I'm thinking that the white player wants, uh, wants to lose a piece. And after knight to e7, the idea is to play knight d7 and push the queen away from our territory. So this could continue like that. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I think it's uh, the most um, easy way of playing for white. Because in my opinion, queen g3 probably gives... Uh, equality because after knight f6 in my opinion everything is well we are losing by one point but we are already creating some pressure on the d4 pawn so probably because of the space because of the mobility this this is better for white so here my suggestion is just to play knight to f and of course this knight is protecting the pawn and if queen takes uh, our continuation it's quite easy king takes uh, c4 in my opinion it's uh, normal and after a5 we will play this game with c5 and we will try to create compensation on the king's uh, side of the board so of course white has a connected past pawn but we have activity and uh, white has worse bishops than we so okay it isn't an easy game again but you have attack, you can create problems to your opponents. And for example, the light square bishop won't develop easily. So my idea is that this is completely playable for black. Of course, it's completely nuts, but it's playable. So let's go back. And uh, we've seen, for example, the lines with the queen. And okay. What if he plays a different thing? For example, knight d2. Well, knight d2, it's completely playable. Here, we will continue again with f5. And if white plays c4, here, the idea is to play always c6. Because after pawn takes, here, you can take on d4. And you can create problems. Of course, this is bad for white. But if pawn takes, bishop takes, and we are leading on the development. So this is inter interesting for black. So we are seeing several lines that are new on the Damiano defense. I haven't seen any one of these lines in an official game. So let's jump for the line with bishop c4. So we've already seen the ideas with knight takes and uh, queen e7. We've seen right now the ideas with d4. And right now we will see the most dangerous one in my opinion this one it's very complicated for black so if your opponent plays bishop c4 please don't take any risks because this will be very complicated for you so my suggestion probably is playable but you will need to memorize a lot of moves and and more important comprehend the ideas so my uh, suggestion is, well, the idea of the black, uh, white player is just to prevent the castle king side because we are already advanced f6. Ben Feingold is always saying, never play f6, but yeah, but 
here we advanced. This is the Damiano defense, the oldest opening in the chess world. So here we will continue with c6. Our goal is to advance d5. So for me, this is the only continuation possible for white. If white wants to win this game, this is the only idea. So after knight c, I will defend that you need to continue with d5. It isn't easy, this game, of course. This is the more, most complicated line of all. Because, of course, we are giving up a pawn. But in my opinion, this is very enjoyable again for black. Because after pawn takes, we will advance b5. And after bishop goes to b3, to continue protecting the pawn, we will advance b4. Because we want to take back this pawn. So, very important. Knight e4 probably will be played, I don't know, but this doesn't look very well. Because if you lateralize your knight, the knight won't go anywhere. Because the bishop is here, yeah? So, this probably is the only idea. And after that, well, <laughs> you can take. Because now he is protecting just with one piece. Now, very important, the only way for white to try to win this position, and it's the best move, is to take on e5. And this line will be very complicated for black, but you are seeing this video, so you will know the continuation. And you, if you want, you can put on pause, because this is important, you need to think a little bit about this position. The king is on the center, and of course you can't take or else queen check and the witch is back. So we don't want the witch on our territory. It's terrible. We lose the game. So here I will defend the idea of bishop e6. Because we can't... Uh, yeah, j just to show, g6 doesn't give any activity for black. We need to develop our pieces. Slowly, but we will. And the thing is that g6, okay, probably it's the best move by the computers, but after bishop e6, queen h5, we will ask an important question to our opponents. After king e7, how will white continue his attack? Probably most of your opponents will continue with knight check to win the rook. And yes, this isn't bad for white, but it isn't so easy uh, as it looks. Because after h take, takes, uh, queen takes rook, we will continue with, uh, of course, this isn't playable, because bishop, king, and queen, this isn't playable. So we will continue with an interesting idea. Queen c, knight is playable too, but I prefer queen c8, because... I want to take the knight and I want to protect the, the bishop because the bishop is the only protector of the knight. So here doesn't does exist only one continuation for white if white wants to win this game. It's knight g3. And after this move, I will defend the idea of king f7. Just to protect the king and look at the position. We are losing by three full points. But, again, we are leading on the development. The game is completely crazy. But, if you put on an engine, the engine will say one, uh, one point and a half for white. So, yes, it's one for white. But, can you win this game? I think this is playable. Serious. Not in classical chess, but in Blitz or even Rapids, I think it's playable because uh, he needs to uh, advance the um, develop the bishop and the queen isn't well placed. And about this king, if he castles kingside, we can create problems. So my suggestion is that uh, you continue with a5 to create pressure on the bishop to try to win the bishop. And 
Here, he will need to think because, for example, if he advances the pawn, okay, you can take and then you advance. This is already interesting because if bishop takes, the game is equal because of g5. And after queen check, g6. And after queen g7, bishop g7. And now we will create problems because if he does that, well, we can continue with knight d7, and yes, we are losing by 4 points, but where will this queen go? She, she doesn't have any, any moves. So, this is playable. This is interesting. You can win this queen if you play well, and you, of course, your opponent plays badly. So, this is interesting. Another idea can be, for example, the bishop. And, okay, if this happens, you will need to continue your developing and you're going to play to, to play better than him. Of course, you're losing by three full points, but well, this is a gambit. This is a suspicious gambit. So you know where are you going? <laughs> so it's complicated. Uh, so we have seen three different continuations on the Damiano's defense and we have seen some traps too. So, uh, we've seen that the Damiano's defense um, happens after f6 and after knight takes, it is important to play queen to this place. Then we've seen that after d4, my suggestion is d5. It's super complicated. And after we've seen the lines with bishop c4 and I'm defending c6 with d5. Now, to finish this lesson, I want to uh, put five exercises. And this, uh, these are exercises to confirm if you learned all the variations. Are quite easy uh, exercises. So, let's go to the first. So, the first one is this position. And you just need to say, what is the best move for black? I am not going to give you the answer because I want you to practice. And if you want, you can put on the comments and I will answer you. Second exercise is this one. How can we continue this position? Do you remember? It's quite easy. Third position. This is the variation with the four. How can we continue? Two more exercises. Fourth. In this one, we are seeing the position where the queen is creating pressure on the pawn. So this pawn is pinned. How can we continue? This one is more complicated. Do you remember? What is the best continuation for this uh, position? Finally, last one. In this position, we are seeing the last variation with bishop c4. And here, this is completely crazy, this position. Looks like your king is completely exposed. And of course, we haven't seen all the variants. So, uh, if you want, please tell me and ask me to put a video about one of these lines, because we can talk about that for more uh, 30 minutes or one hour or even more. So... What is the best move here? So, you can always put on the comments and then I will give my best to answer your comments. So, uh, for today, it's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have talked about the Damiano's defense, but with a different perspective, because I've seen several videos uh, here on, on YouTube and they all talk about the trap for white and how this is terrible for black and you're going to lose with violence. But try to play the queen to e7 and tell me, tell me, you're going to win games. It isn't so impossible to win games. I've already played uh, more complicated gambits than this one so i'm playing bad stuff but it doesn't matter uh but tell me do the experience and tell me 
what uh, what happened in your games if you lose with violence that's not my fault but uh, i think it's um, a different opening and uh, if you want to do creative stuff and uh, opening that is uh, destined uh, to nuts persons uh, i don't know if the english is correct but yeah uh, you can try. Uh, I like to play all kind of openings, and this one, for me, it's it's very in enjoyable. So I hope you you enjoyed this content. Don't forget push the like button, uh, subscribe. I I need your help. Please subscribe, and I'll be waiting for uh, some suggestions to do here on this channel. So till tomorrow, tomorrow at the same hour, we will be here to put more chess. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>